Hello, hello, and happy day to you. Happy Sabbath, or whenever you are watching this video, I hope that our Lord, that the Holy Spirit may go forth and that His Word may not come back void today to your life and to your heart. Will you pray with me? Father, I pray that as we open your word today, that you may speak to us in a very special way, that you may bless us, that you may lift us up, and that you may fill us, Lord, with hope and your holy presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about hope, because life has a way of killing dreams, doesn't it? You set out with high hopes for your schooling, your career, your family, and your golden years. You have plans, aspirations, and expectations, but things don't always turn out the way you expected. Plans fall through. People let you down. You let yourself down. Suddenly, the little, the, the life that you're living isn't the life you dreamed of at, at all. Or you find yourself in a place you never expected to be. Fantine, a young woman from Victor Hugo's novel Les Miserables, sings a powerful song in the musical version as she finds herself in a hopeless place. A summer lover has left her alone with a child. She finds work in a factory, but has to place her daughter, Cassette, in the keeping of some cruel and crooked innkeepers. When it is discovered that she has a child out of wedlock, she's thrown out of the factory and into the streets. She's forced to sell her hair, then her teeth and her body in order to pay for Cassette's care. She's falsely accused of a crime and placed under arrest. And on top of it all, she's desperately ill. And out of that dark place, she sings, I dreamed a dream in days gone by. Now life has killed the dream I dreamed. Hopefully none of us are in quite that despre uh, des desperate of a place today. But we all have dreams that haven't come true. We all have, we all find ourselves in places we never expected to be. We know how it feels to be so disappointed, so discouraged. It feels as though all hope is gone. If it's not true for you right now, it's probably true for someone you know and maybe for someone you love. I want to open I want us to open the Bible in the book of John. We're going to open up the Bible in the book of John chapter 20 verses 10 and 18. All right, John chapter 20, verses 10 to 18, and it says the following. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. Verse 12. And she saw two angels in white, in white, sitting, one at the at the head of the other, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Verse 13. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. Verse 14. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Verse 15. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16. Jesus then said to her, Mary! <laughs> Mary! She turned and said to him, Rabboni! Which is to say, teacher. 
verse 17. Jesus said to her, do not cling unto me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had been, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Mm. Life without hope. As we have already read, Mary has already made one trip to the tomb on this morning. When she and the other women found it empty, they hurried back and shared the news with the disciples, two of whom ran out to see for themselves. Mary followed them back out again, but by the time she arrived, they had already turned to go home, which left Mary alone at the open tomb. It's yawning emptiness staring at her in the face. She did the only thing left to do. She cried. Why are you crying? The angelic figures ask. It must have sounded to her like the most ridiculous question in the world. Why wouldn't she be crying, right? Jesus was gone, verse 13. They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. And notice how she speaks to him as a person. Still, not they have taken his body away, but they have taken my Lord away. Her teacher, her savior, the one who had given her life back. Mm. I love that because Mary recently had a past and Jesus had given her a new beginning, a new path. And she's crying because her Savior, the one who gave her that new future, that new present is gone. After years of torment, she had begun to dream again of good things for herself and her people as well. But life had killed that dream. A Roman cross had seen to that. What now? Would the tigers come again at night? The demons that had once haunted her, would they come back? What would she do? Who would she be? What did the future hold without Jesus? She might as well have said, they have taken my hope away and I don't know where they have put it, right? Hope. Now let's talk a little bit about hope and what is hope, right? What is hope anyway? Wishful thinking, naive optimism. What is hope? The dictionary tells us that hope is a desire with the expectation of fulfillment. So hope begins with the desire for something good, but then adds to the element, adds the element of expectations, of confidence. Without expectations, it's just a wish, right? And wishes tend not to come true. It's not wishful thinking, but it's with an expectation. When we hope for something, we are counting on it. But hope is more than a word. Hope is like oxygen, right? Without it, we die. When a team loses hope, the game is over. When investors lose hope, the stock market tumbles. When a patient loses hope, death is crouching at the door. Victor Frank survived years in the Nazi concentration camps. He noticed that prisoners died just after Christmas. They were hoping that they'd be free by then. When they weren't free, they gave up. He learned that as long as prisoners had something to live for, a reason to press on, they could, enjoy, they could endure just about anything. But once they lost hope, they quickly died. Dostoevsky said that to live without hope is to cease to live. Bobby Knight has a different take on it. Bobby Knight, of course, is the legendary basketball coach who led the Indiana Hoosiers to three NCAA tournament finals. While boasting 
one of the highest graduation rates for his players, right? He was also famous for throwing chairs and chewing out officials, players, fans, and anyone in the vicinity. He recently wrote a book entitled The Power of Negative Thinking. According to Bobby Knight, hope is the worst word in the English language. He says it's foolish and lazy to tell yourself that things are going to be all right. They'll only be all right if somebody steps up and does something, right? It might sound a bit off, but Bobby's perhaps not too far from the truth here. Hope needs a reason, something or someone that can change the trajectory, that can get us to a better place. Without a, re- without a reason, hope is just wishful thinking. All of which to say Mary had no reason to hope that morning, right? Think about it. There was no wishful thinking, no naive optimism. She expected nothing more than a corpse. <sighs> But Jesus Christ had risen in, had risen. And Jesus is speaking to her, but she's not buying it. She watched him die. She saw him laid to rest. As far as she is concerned, it is over. The empty tomb did not speak to her of resurrection, not by long shot. So she did what we all do at a fresh grave. She wept because there was nothing else to do. Sharing hope. Mary had no reason to hope that morning until she sensed someone standing there. And she turned to see who. And that someone asked her a question. Let's pick up again, reading in the verse 14. We're going to read from verse 14 once again. And it says, now when she has said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. She didn't recognize him at first. Maybe it was her tears. Maybe it was the dim morning light. Most likely it was the fact that his appearance had changed, perhaps, as we know from other accounts. Woman, why are you crying? There it is again, the question. I guess we shouldn't be surprised that Jesus' first words after his resurrection were in the form of a question. In all of the Gospels, we see him. In all of the Gospels, we see him meet people where they are, where they are, ask questions, listening, understanding, giving them time. And here he does the same thing as he touches us how to share, as he teaches us how to share hope. And it turns out we don't share hope by hitting people over the head with it. Notice how Jesus, notice Jesus doesn't say to Mary, ta-da, it's me, Jesus. He doesn't say, stop crying, woman, it's all good. Everything is going to be okay. He doesn't say those words. And he certainly doesn't scold her for lack of faith. He meets her where she is. He asks her to tell him about it and listens as she explains once again. Have you ever noticed how grieving people need to tell you what happened again and again? Mary doesn't. Mary does the same thing. In fact, let's give Mary credit for staying in the moment. Notice the other two disciples. I hate to say it, but but they do the typical guy thing, right? They raise each other to the tomb barge right in, find it empty, and then leave the clothes lying there. Mary stays in the moment, and Jesus meets her there. There's a lesson there for those of us who want to share hope with people. Do not rush the good news. When someone is hurting, discouraged, grieving, they don't need happy talk. And they certainly do not need religious cliches. Everything happens for a reason. They're in a better place. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Don't say those things. Don't say it. And definitely don't sing it. Grief is real. Loss is painful. Unemployment stinks. Relationships can break your heart. 
And when we need to say so, we need to feel it. We need to say so. We need to feel it. If someone in your world is hurting, if you want to share hope with them, the best thing to do is meet them in that moment. Ask them to tell you about it. And then sit still along enough to listen. I notice this following about hope. Hope comes from evidence and experience. And that's what Jesus does for Mary. But then when she's ready... He's gentle, and he gently and very personally reveals himself to her. Verse 16, Jesus says, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Jesus says to her, do not hold on to me. For I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary says, he doesn't say, she doesn't say anything, she goes, right? And there was something about the sound of his voice, something about the mention of her name. That opened her eyes, I like to think so, and her heart, right? It was him. And suddenly she had a reason to believe. Notice that before this, notice that before this, Mary was hopeless. Not naive optimism, no wishful thinking. She was hopeless. But when she sees Jesus, when she meets Jesus, when when she has a personal encounter with Jesus, then her hope is restored. The empty tomb, the angel, the angel announcement, that wasn't enough to convince to convince her. She needed something more personal than that. A real encounter with Jesus. And you know what? We need to do the same thing. Those of us who struggle with believing, believing Jesus sometimes, there is an empty tube written records, both biblical and non-biblical. The transformation of the disciples, they changed lives of people, you know. But we also need something, something personal, something experiential. You ever met someone who says, you know what? I know the Bible and I pray every day, but still I have a hard time believing and I have a hard time with hope. And it's because we can know all information, but information doesn't necessarily mean means transformation. It's an encounter with Jesus Christ. And that's what the Lord offered Mary there. At the tomb, suddenly he was there, more real, more powerful, more glorious than she had ever thrown known to him to be. And because of that, she had hope. Jesus was not only there with her. He had proven that he was stronger than death, stronger than evil, stronger than all the bad things that can happen in this world. And Mary now wants to hug him wants to celebrate but jesus hadn't ascended to his father so he says do not touch me and instead gives her a mission to go and tell go and 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 tell he says tell my brothers tell the world death is defeated i am risen and that's what she did and in verse 18 says that mary magda magdalene came and told the disciples Mary of Magdala went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had said these things to her. And this brings me to my final point, and that is that hope is a who. You see, hope is not a what or a when or a why. Hope is a who. Bobby Knight, Bobby Knight is right. Things do do not get better just because we want them to, right? 
They get better because somebody does something. Hope is always embodied in a person. Shareholders hope that the new CEO can turn the company around. Citizens hope a new leader can get their country on a good track. Hope is a who. Somebody wise enough, strong enough, good enough to get us to a better place. And you know what? When we think about the elections, when we think about who's president, when we think about who is our district representative, who is running the country and our personal lives, who is our boss, and all of these crazy things that are happening in our world, we shouldn't put our hope in those people. Because every single one of them, and even our families, are going to are going to lead us into a place of disappointment. But if we put our trust in Jesus Christ, if we put our hope in Jesus Christ, then everything changes. Jesus Christ is that someone, is that who. His resurrection proves that he is stronger than any setback, any failure, any loss, any disappointment, any tiger that comes at night. If life has a way of killing dreams, Jesus has a way of bringing them back to life. I don't know of what things you have been dreaming for all of your life. I don't know what dreams have been shattered. I don't know where is your hope today, but let me tell you that if life has a way of killing dreams, that if your dreams have been shattered, if you have been disappointed, Jesus has a way of bringing those dreams back and bringing you fulfillment. That's not to say we always get what we want or that every bad thing can magically be undone. Life doesn't work that way, but it is to say that God can and will do something good with our future. Notice Mary didn't get exactly what she wanted. She wasn't going to be with her, right? Jesus wasn't going to be with, with, with Mary the way he had been. Things had changed, but he was going to be with her in ways she had never dreamed possible and i love that about our god because sometimes our dreams are shattered because he wants to give us something better something higher a bigger and better dream and i love that i love that we 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 undergo situations that are hard to bear but boy oh boy god allows that and jesus allows that because he has Something better for us. There was still a lot she didn't understand, Mary that is. And she didn't know exactly what the future held, but she knew it could be good. Now that Christ had risen. And that's what hope is. Hope is the confidence that God can can and will do something good. In this life and in the life to come. Hope is the confidence that God can and will do something good in this life and the life to come. Whatever circumstance you may find yourself, put your trust in God. And I'll say this again. Hope is the confidence that God can and will do something good in this life and the life to come. Whatever circumstance you mind, you may find yourself, put your confidence in God. Put your confidence in Jesus Christ. I want to remind you today, and I want to leave you with this, that hope is a who, and that hope is not wishful thinking. Think about all of the things that you are going through in life. Think about All of the things that are happening around the world with our nation, with our cities, with our families, and everything possible that could be going wrong. Or even perhaps you know somebody. Natural disasters in Central America. And all of the things happening today. Be filled with the hope of Christ. That every time you take a step outside of your home, people may see you. 
in the midst of everything that is tumbling down, they can see your face and they can see your smile and they can see you praising Jesus and they can see you serving the church <laughs> and they can see you at your fullest because he has promised that he will give peace that surpasses all understanding. One, hope is a who. And two, when your dreams are shattered, like it was Mary Magdalene's dreams, that she had no longer, she no longer had her, her savior, her Jesus, the one who brought her out of such a messy life. Jesus says, look, I'm not going to be with you like I've always been here for the past few years. But I promise you this, that from now on, things are going to be even better because I will always be with you. And there is something about experiencing the presence of God in our lives that gives us peace that doesn't make sense to the world, but it makes sense right here and right here. So, leave you with two things today. One, hope is a who. Do not put your hope in people who will disappoint you, but put your hope in Christ. And two, <laughs> Things are about, well, Jesus has better dreams for you. Bigger and better dreams for you. May you put your hope in him. God bless you. Let me pray with you. Father, I pray for this person who's watching this video. I don't know what he or she is going through, Lord, but I pray that you may fill this person with your Holy Spirit, with your Holy Presence. In despite of everything that is going on, Father, that we may feel and that we may experience, Lord, not only feel, but we may experience hope, true hope, Father, that, may you, that we may experience Jesus Christ in our lives in the midst of all of the chaos. Father, I pray, we pray as well that Jesus may come soon. Because we don't want any more death, any more trouble, any more tears, any more sicknesses. We pray these things, Father, in the precious name of Christ. Amen and amen. Believe it. Live it. Share it.